Hi to everyone, uh, all our avid watchers, and it's great to have Naomi back for the netball this week. Keith, uh, as well, and uh, it's great to have Fred back, mate. We missed you last week and uh, went into hiding. Everybody's been asking, where, where were you? This week, we'll get straight into the uh, round 12, I think, Keith. Um, Juan Thaggy versus Moe. Yes, at Juan Thaggy. Uh, you'd expect Juan Thaggy to win after coming off uh, a really good victory at Bansar last week. Big trip, the biggest trip in our league, Juan Thaggy to Bansar. Uh, handled it well, kicked seven goals to nothing in the first quarter. Um, still, they need to uh, really need to put together some some good wins. They're at home against Maui that have probably now slipped out of any contention for the five. Uh, so it'll be interesting. But Maui are workmen on the side. One thing you'll, you'll need to be on the game. I think they have, uh, just looking through their list from last week, there's probably quite a few of their first choice players uh, that aren't available or haven't been playing, so not quite sure of the reasons there. But coming off the good win of Ben Star, uh, the incentive to make the five or stay in the hunt for the five should be enough to get them over the line. Yeah, I, um, I think Monthaggy will win that, yeah. Uh, Maui's uh, been coming along all right, but uh, they didn't have that big a loss last week. I mean, playing so at the top side, but uh, it was a big ask. But, um, yeah, I, I think Monthaggy, I concur with you there, Keith. Uh, obviously, in the A grade, we don't have Maui playing. They do have a team in every other grade, but not A grade. So we'll go to the second game. Which is uh, Terrell and Hush in Bairnsdale, which could be a big turnaround of the one earlier in the year that we went to, Keith. Yeah, well, Bairnsdale were fantastic. Uh, I've seen Bairnsdale twice this year, and they've uh, had two great wins. They only had three for the for the season, but it was uh, Terrell and then Ruin. Uh, disappointing last week. I know they've, they've come out of a difficult period with a change of coach, and, and that's always. Uh, unsettling. Terrelgan again has that incentive. It's just a game Terrelgan can't afford to lose. Uh, there's a lot of talent there. They obviously kept in the battle against Lee and Gatha pretty well last week, even though conditions became quite torrid uh, at Lee and Gatha, but they kept kept in touch and I just think the incentive and they got they got a lot of quality players. Uh, they got a purpose about their footy and I expect Terrelgan, Terrelgan to win that again. Okay, the netball. Well, Terrelgan almost had a big upset over top place leading at the last week, going down by just a goal. Um, I expect that it'll be a Terrelgan win um, again this week. Um, Bensdale will really, if they want any chance of finals, will need to get a win on the board this week, but I definitely think that um, Terrelgan's going to be too strong and we won't see much more of Bensdale this season. So is there any big match-ups there that are on the cards or anything like that? Um, Drew and Sale, I expect to be the biggest one um, this weekend. Oh, all right. But I mean any player oh, match-ups. any player match-ups, yeah, right. Any um, top goal shooter against top goal defence or anything like that? No, um, both of these sides are filled with just good players, so no real standouts from either team, and it'll just be a matter of which team can put it all together on the day. Good evenly, evenly balanced sides. That's okay. it. Uh, the next one we have is Morwall hosting Lee and Gather. The you know potential giant killers, Morwall. They've knocked off uh, a few of the teams up there, and here's their chance to knock off second place. Yeah, I, I've just got a bit of a feeling about this game, and uh, very often my feelings are uh, you know, no, way, <laughs> way, way off the planet. Uh, I just it's at Morwall. They're really stringing it together well now. They've got that little bit of feel about them. Um, you know, there's a big feeling about Lee and Gasser too, but they've had some, you know, traumatic times the last few weeks. And I, I you know, I think that has to have a, have a bit of an impact. I'm also a bit worried about some of their uh, players missing. Like the coach hasn't played much this year. Uh, not quite sure the, the issue there. They've been a pretty good side without him, but I just get that feel at Moorwall and they've got that sense and they've got that stride about them at the moment. And it's 
it's a really fantastic opportunity for more uh, to to really step up and say, hey, we're going to be a contender this year, not just make the finals, we are potentially a contender. But when you look at this side, it's a very, very good side. Um, I noticed Jack Brown again, right amongst their very best last week. And I think, you know, as he has been every week, and he's a really fantastic key defender who I think it may have slipped under the guard a bit. I know he's been selected in Italy the last couple of years, didn't make it this year because of uh, an injury. injury. But uh, he's, you know, and having watched him this year, he's just a very, very good player. Sets up their defence. They've got uh, uh, Funky Duncan down there as well, who's another general. And the whole side looks good. And then you get the, the quality around the midfield of and Adam Bailey, uh, Michael Ades, Michael Ades, yeah. Robert Michael Ades, um, uh, the captain Suter, uh, Ben and Johnson who sneaks in everywhere, and these couple of young lads who've come in from Mick Gibson and the Bailey boys, uh, really good. And then add the Ryan's into that mix. They're very well served in the ruck with uh, Tom Crosby and and others. And uh, yeah, I just think they're going on pretty well. And I'll pick them to. Cause an upset. I said I wouldn't pick against the league other until they lost the game. They have lost the game and I'll pick them to lose too. I'll tell you what, Fred's just told me the Tigers are going to maul the Parrots. So I'll tell you what, I'll go with you there. I think Maul might cause an upset this week. It's on their home turf. Last two games they've had there, they've played well. So uh, yeah, we'll go for the Tigers to cause an upset in round 12. What about the netball though? Well, I imagine that Lee and Gather will be too strong. Um, for Maud will have any chance, they're going to have to shut down the attacking end at Lee and Gather. They're the highest scoring team by far. And um, the teams that beat them are the teams that can stop them defensively. But um, look, Maud have surprised us a couple of times in the last few rounds with results they've been able to pull off. But I um, imagine that Lee and Gather is going to be too strong this week. Okay. All right, we'll move along to the next one, which is Mafra hosting Warrigal, which they've done all right. They've got Drawn and Warrigal at home two weeks in a row there, Kurt. I wonder who set that draw up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, Warrigal did beat them at Warrigal earlier in this year, yeah. earlier in the year. Mafra is uh, a pretty wounded side. Uh, quite a few, quite a few players missing. Uh, Dan Stubb is now missing full time. Gone, on, yeah. Uh, gone away, which adds to the injury woes. Uh, Warrigal's got its own issues too. You know, with injuries out, and I, I suspect uh, our guest we had last week, Matt Gray, is uh, playing injured because he hasn't had uh, the impact he normally does. And it was interesting that when we had him on last week, the other guys were out training, and Matt wasn't out training. So uh, I think he's a, uh, you know, he's probably getting onto the field because he's captain doing. He might have thought it was more important to be on the show than no, be no, no, because no? you shocked him by what do you mean? <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's a bit unfortunate. Warrigal aren't a bit better equipped at this stage and had a few, few of their key players there. Otherwise, I think they'd be a chance of beating Mafra. But Mafra, yeah, they've won seven out of. Uh, what, 11 games? Yes. Yeah, they just seem to be able to get over the line and stay in contention despite what adversities they may have. And uh, I expect I'll beat Warrigal, but won't be, uh, won't be all that one side of the game. Yeah, well, um, Mafra's got a few out. They had Betty Coleman, uh, Gary Jones, uh, but the replacements that they seem to be able to bring on have all had a bit of a run, you know, they've been coached the same way all the way through this side there. And it just seems that, okay, they, they have a fella out, they bring in another one in, but they, he knows the team plan, plays to the team plan, and they seem to be able to cover their losses very well. Well, it's, it's not just that, and contradictory to what you said. They brought in a guy last week who was clean from North Gibson, and uh, Jackson Scott, I think his name was. Uh, he just Put it, a young kid, you know, junior, he just put it into the side as if he'd been there for, for ever and a day. Oh, well, he followed the coach's instructions then. Okay, uh, to the netball. Um, 
Well, Warrigal had their first glimpse of a win on Saturday, but managed to um, end up with a draw. I think that um, Warrigal season is probably pretty much over for this year, but if they can keep the crux of the players they've got this year, maybe add one or two, they could be a real contender in A grade this year. But with what they've got um, left this season, I can't imagine them getting over Mafra, especially with the trip down there. Okay, no worries. Well, uh, while we're on that and talking to some of the Druin netballers, uh, like I said, day evening, and how did they go against Mapper, which I think they won, did they not? They did but win. Very, very physical game, Naomi. Now, what does a very physical game in netball mean when you've got these contact rules and, and whatever that I don't understand? It. But, yeah, a little bit going on behind the play? Or well, they've it? actually changed it from... Netball's no longer considered a non-contact sport. It's actually a semi-contact sport. Semi-contact? Semi-contact, so we're not a full-contact sport although some players play like it. Um, but it does mean a little bit of body on body, um, not so much necessarily behind the play, but you're allowed to contest a lot more um, on a netball court these days. So um, the whistle doesn't go as much and you're allowed to actually tussle for the ball and the umpire only steps in when they actually feel like one player's done necessarily the wrong thing. So, you know, we're working towards becoming a football. Well, now we know, Chris. <laughs> so so what, what constitutes contact then when that that call is mine. Um, contact, I guess, if you're the first one to the ball and then the player's late onto the ball right. and at the, um, at the body, that would be considered contact. Um, also, if you're using any part of your body to restrict a player from being able to move onto a ball, that would be contact. Um, if they've got the ball and you whack it out of their hands, contact. Contact, okay. No well, worries. Semi contact as if you half bump into them. Fair <laughs> enough, okay. But we wouldn't want them playing half hearted, would we? Okay, we to the last one. Um, oh, while we're on that though, Keith, uh, we had a big night at Mafra last Saturday. They had their reunion of their 2002 seniors and their reserves 2001 and 2. Uh, most of the Mafra blokes were very appreciative of, the, of a reporter being there and you were in fine form with them. Well, uh, you might have had a big night. I just had a quiet <laughs> night getting around chatting to a, a few very nice people at, at Mavra, lovely people, and I certainly wish Joe May a speedy recovery. Uh, <laughs> but, no, uh, good night, and of course that was a massive premiership for Mavra. 54 years without a flag, and they jagged that one uh, back in 2002, which started you know, a magnificent era for them. So there would have been a lot, that would have been their first uh, Premiership reunion. So yeah, that was something foreign to them and the first time they've ever done it. But they had a reasonably good crowd, the players certainly enjoyed, themse enjoyed themselves. And uh, a lot of the old timers were obviously enjoying it. But yeah, it was a very good night and um, well done to the Mafra blokes. I think over the next 10 years they'll have a lot of 10 year uh, reunions for Premierships. But anyway, we'll go on to the last game which is... Drawn hosting sale up here at uh, Sinclair Street Oval. Sinclair Street, the yeah. Pier Haven home Homes Oval. Over. It is actually on Sinclair Street. <laughs> on Sinclair Street, yeah. Uh, yeah, hard to tip against sale, isn't it? Despite where your heart is. Uh, yeah, they've done everything right apart from that hiccup at Moore, which I don't think anybody can really explain, except more were probably better than Sale so thought they were at the time. Um, but I don't think Sale so will come to come to Druin uh, not fully prepared and not knowing that, uh, you know, if they drop their guard a bit, Druin are capable of beating them. And, uh, yeah, I just think for Druin to, to win the game, they'll have the incentive there, they've got to win this really to stay, stay in touch. Um, but to uh, you know, the incentive will be there for Drew, but they're just going to have to play at their best. They can't afford lapses that they've dropped into at various times. And over the past month, five weeks, they've dropped a couple of games that they should have won last week. Was one of those. Terrell and was probably another. Uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it, and I'm hoping it's a fully competitive game. But seen Sale a couple of times and they were great and last time Drew played them uh, 
you know, oh, took very a, good. It took a half back to kick out those two goals in the last quarter. So, yeah, uh, yeah, they've got a very good back line, forward line, terrific on ball. And I think the only thing that's going to stop them is, you know, traditionally when they come down this far, a lot of the players head off to Melbourne to have a night out. Uh, maybe hopefully well, if, for they on, if they head off on Friday night, that would be really good. But, yeah, but, they might, hopefully for Drillon they might be thinking about the night out instead yeah. of thinking of the, the business they've got to yeah, think. Yeah. The other thing that might be a bit of an influence is, is the weather and the, and the condition of the Drillon ground because if it is wet, it's certainly different conditions to, to what sail play on, be it at home or most other grounds in this league. So when it's a wet day coming up, do you, as the line marker, do you have to put in a heavier uh, uh, solution in, or do you, is it the same one, or what? Same solution, you're just going to do it more often. Sometimes <laughs> you have to go out in half time in the seconds. <laughs> OK. All right, uh, the netball. Uh, yeah, obviously drawn and sale. Drawn... Oh, gee, this will be an interesting one, won't it? <laughs> it definitely will. Um, so, look... I'm a drawn girl at heart and I'm going to tip Drewan this week. I'm not going to um, go against them. Sale might be above them on the ladder, but Drewan is starting to come into some good form. Um, should have their whole team in this week. Um, everything going as planned. And I think that um, with their full side in, that they're going to be too strong for sale. And um, if they do get a win this week, it could really change up um, the top of the ladder in A grade. And we might see... Um, you a physical game or just semi compact? Semi compact. Oh, semi no, contact. No, I do um, definitely think it'll be um, a, physical a physical game. game. Oh, and good. I think that um, yeah, players are going to have to really stand up if they want to um, walk away with the win. As long as there's no sling tackles because they're illegal. Right. You okay. just need to tell the umpires that. <laughs> All right, no worries. Well, that's round 12. Thank you very much. Thanks, Fred. He's not talking to us tonight because we left him behind last week. So. We'll make that up in the next few weeks, Fred. But thanks to Keith, Naomi, and uh, we'll see you all next week.